everybody how's everybody doing for this full moon hope everybody's okay uh, I'll wait for a rod to um, to come I'm so excited about this talk uh, another note uh, I'm, my head is full of uh, impressions oh there he is beautifully okay mm. hmm perfect There he is. Hiya. Hi. Hello, Rod. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. And you? Oh, good. Well, I want to first of all thank Rod for um, making time to do this for me. I know he's very busy. He does a lot, a lot of lives, even on YouTube. So go check him out if you're not following him so far. Love his content. Love his guests. Um, very, very good astrologer. So thank you very much for, for making the time for, for, for me today. <laughs> it's my, my pleasure. And I also see a lot of your work. I think, well, who get that energy to do the kind oh. of a live stream every day? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll give you a little secret. It's all this Gemini placement. So I'm a Gemini sun, Gemini moon and Mercury and mid heaven in Gemini, all in the ninth house. I think that, I think, and that does it. <laughs> yeah, that works. I, but because I also have a Gemini moon. So I think we're kind of Perfect. with this. And you know, Gemini moon, we know that is like a talk. When we talk, that is a nourishing to when you communicate it. That is a Absolutely. nourishing through the air. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. I, I, with all these lives, I was able to combine three of my loves talking astrology and meeting new people <laughs> exactly exactly and catch up with friends because i always like when i run my podcast i usually say uh, my colleague uh, my friend my colleague my friend i don't know who what should i call them because they are my friend and exactly I say, but they are my colleague yes. too <laughs> I, I i call everybody my astro buddies my astro astro friends because they are we are, yeah. we are all like an astro family that we you know share the the knowledge and experience and learn from each other which is also very important exactly I agree. Uh, so first of all thank you Thank you again and thank everybody for joining. Um, I wanted to talk about fixed stars because I don't know much personally about them. So I want to learn as well. And I know they're very important. Um, so Rod, could you please tell us what are fixed stars for people who don't know? What are they and why are they important? <laughs> okay. Well, that's a start from the very beginning. Um, let's say that. So when we say it, because it's the basic things, because I think um, I'm from... Um, no native English speak country. So for okay. us, for us, the star could be mean planet or stars. So that is very interesting when I learn in the English or when I learn in the astrology. And the first things I would talk about is I talk about stars. And then I keep people keep correct me, say star, I think star, you are talking about planet. I said, oh, they're different. <laughs> then I have the notion about the stars and the planets are different things. So I start to look at it and I realize, okay, so what do we talk about in our natal chart? Most of part, most part of it mm -hmm. is planet, like yes. Venus, Mercury. Well, well, there's only one star in our chart we talk about is the sun. <laughs> Of yeah. course, yeah, yeah, sun and moon are not stars, but they're very important in our chart yes, as well. Exactly, yes. exactly. So the stars are those uh, uh, celestial body in the night sky we can see, but they appear not really move like the planet and the moon. Okay. So that's why the ancient people call it fixed stars. In the beginning, they believe they are not moving. To be honest, and uh, the astrologer apply the big stars, all the stars in the astrology has a long time. I have to say, since the beginning, since the birth of the astrology. The Babylonian, even, even from Babylonian age, right? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I, know there are, I know there are many. I know there are many fixed stars, and we cannot talk about all of them. Yeah. Uh, but I want to mention the one that is, interests me, so I'm going to be a little bit of selfish. Cool. I have Beetlejuice on my midheaven. Ooh. So what does that mean, for example? What is I know when people talk about Beetlejuice, it's like kind of a good start because there are some bad, good ones. So let's see, what is that about? <laughs> I, I, would, I want to say that I, I want to see all the stars with a good, a good. with a good meaning. Yeah. That is just like a, 
But energy is the energy. It's either too much, mm -hmm. you don't know how to use it, or you know how to use it, you know how to channel it. For example, I, I love mention, that. Yeah, I can mention I love, another okay. thing. Most people know a fixed star has a really, really bad name called Algo, the 26 yes. degree of Taurus. But do you know who has Algo in their chart? Who? First, who? Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. He, he has a Venus Mercury in his chart. Come, wow. we, say, we say align with Algo. Align. We don't say uh, for some astrologer we don't like say Kang Jung because uh, the the dimension. The, you, if you see the three D dimension, Algo is really much higher in the yes, North yes. celestial hemisphere mm -hmm. than the planets. So we would say align. Mm -hmm. But you can say Kang Jung. People understand. Also, the footballer David Beckham, he has a Mercury. Wow or align with alcohol. Okay, let's come back to the uh, beetle juice. I also have a beetle juice. Uh, I have the beetle juice is, um, we use another method, we call it parent. And, uh, um, mm -hmm. and so I have them like my moon, parent with the beetle juice. So this is also an interesting stuff. And one thing we have to see, to talk about the beetle juice. Okay, first, if you wonder, what does the, the stars meaning? First things, I think it's very simple, and uh, it does apply to oh, the ancient astrologer. They use the mythology. They use the mythology uh -huh. to explain whole constellation, and that definitely applied to the stars. So okay. Orion, Orion is a hunter. Mm -hmm. So now you know Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse well at least has the meaning of a chasing, hunting, and it is the great mm -hmm. hunter. The great hunter. Oh, so good. okay. So there is nice about chasing something, catch up something, to up to to get something, to fight for something. In the mm -hmm. Babylonian story, this uh, constellation they call it the shepherd of Anu. Anu is a sky god, so he is the shepherd of the sky god. He, who who are the sheep? Those sheep are the planet. So he is oh. the leader, he is the one who regular, who control those, uh, those sheep and goats who running retrograde, back war for war. So he is the one. So that's it. Mm -hmm. And then now we think about the image. This star is in the shoulder, is in the sh on the shoulder or hand who raising the bottom, who raising the club. So it's the beating hand. So they wow. active energy. There's active energy with Beetlejuice. So you fight, you mm. hit, you go to get what you want. Yeah. So Makes this sense. Is a basic Makes meaning. sense. Yeah. yeah. I know um, most astrologers, they would like mm -hmm. to, to, to use the another method, which is uh, according to Ptolemy. Ptolemy will give the idea about the fixed star. They will, he will usually uh, describe it with the planet. Okay, that's another way to talk about it. I think usually when you read the uh, astrology book like uh, Vivian Robson, this is the mm -hmm. book most people apply to it or either from Ptolemy. They will talk about the nature, use, use the ancient word, the nature or quality of the fixed stars. Um, I don't really enjoy or apply this method because it's So how do you use it? Okay, so how do you use it? What do you how do, in okay. your practice? How do you use it? How stars? do I use it? I use a very simple method. I use the mythology and uh, for all oh, the okay. cultural reference, all the cultural reference. Yes. Okay, okay. So just like we use for planets, you would do you would you would apply the same thing for fixed stars to explain the position in the in the horoscopes, right? Uh Yes, yes, I will do that. That way we call the projection. So you project the star to the zodiac, to the to the ecliptic. Mm -hmm. But I also apply another method, who, which is like, uh, um, 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 I think Dr. Bradley Brady, who used the parent at the helical rising helical setting. And that is another mm -hmm. technique uh, that works to look at because, uh, because uh, as you already know, that not all the star is on the ecliptic belt. So when, uh, we, when we're okay. talking about a star is uh, like a rising of the certain degree, but the star is not really rising because they're probably already there. So for me, there is that cause some problem for me to, to say. Oh, so it's from our rising. perspective. Yeah. So because we are moving from our perspective, it's rising, but it's actually in the same place all the time. 
yeah, right? So that's what you're saying. They're already there. They are probably already there or they are not really rising because Zodiac is rising. Uh, Zodiac degree is rising, but that star probably already rising or not rising yet. So there is a problem there. But I okay. mean, keep it simple. Let's keep it simple. If you okay. already know the Zodiac degree, the method of it, just use it until you are not happy with it. Find something else. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Well, that's why I love astrology. That's yeah. why I love astrology. Yeah. You can always, you can, you know, you can interpret it in, in, in different ways. So exactly. which, which do you, which stars do you, do you use it for every reading or do you, is, there, is there specific ones that you love and use and find more important? Uh, well, I, I like, uh, use the fixed star when I do the chart reading. Um, I like to apply it because I like to tell the story, Gemini. I like to tell the story. Yeah. And usually, usually when I when I prepare the chart, I will look at their fixed up position with a parent method or with either method. And then I will remember it. I will have a list. When I chat mm -hmm. to my clients, when they certainly mention some story, I fit into those fixed up story. I will bring oh, out the story. Okay. And that helps okay. me a lot. Yeah. Okay, so from the talking to the client, if they if that resonates and from mm -hmm. their life, they can make. Um, oh, I, I see. It. I like that. So it's like a, a, a touch from the client's story as well. Yes, I, I really like. Cool, yeah. cool. Um, okay, so which ones do you find more important, more impactful? You mean, you mean stars. impactful? You mean yeah, stars. like regulars. Everybody talks about regulars, for example, right? <laughs> you know, like there's some that. We definitely talk about it. Oh, um, okay, now let me tell you something because I think most people know Regulus and Thales and uh, Alden Byron and uh, Former Hall. These four star, so called Royal Stars, Royal Star, a lot of mm -hmm. people call it the Royal Stars, um, which um, I don't want to show off, but I just want to say um, we are not sure the origin of this. Uh -huh. name, so called uh, so called uh, royal star the earliest time I'm, i when i was in university i studied history so i like to you know, check every fact and you, that that is kind good, of good. Kind, kind of things and then the original resource of this name so called royal star we can trace back in the 1775 a french scholar he write in his book called the history of ancient astronomy this to mm -hmm. l'astronomy l'ancien and then he he began this story. I think in the 18th century, they are crazy about Oriental. They're crazy about Egyptian and the he, Hindu yes. and something. So they kind of grab every piece of things they can do to enforce the, their knowledge and say how important it is. But the truth mm -hmm. is, before 1775, we can never find the record so-called full royal star. There's something else. But we are not sure are they these four stars. But I have to say, these four stars, at least three of them, are very close to ecliptic. That means when planet okay. goes through it, planet can really conjunct them, can really meet them. So, and also they are very important in the Babylonian mm -hmm. time because they they are kind of a season maker. Like uh, Alfred Barnum would be the would be the spring equinox, and then the and um. Regulus would be the summer solstice, and then um, Antares mm -hmm. would be the autumn equinox for North Hemisphere. Sorry, if, you, if people live in South Hemisphere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, so 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 winter. Winter. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah winter, yeah. Former Hall, I just went to Omega, and Lynn Bell was started talking about Former Hall. It's in Pisces, and how, what does it affect? Um, so, I, I understand that there's not done many ancient scripts, right? So, mm -hmm. That's why we don't know much about ancient astrology. There are some scripts coming up and translated yes. recently, but we don't know. I always feel that, you know, with that uh, library in Alexandria, we lost so much ancient knowledge. Yeah. Um, that, that we need to recover um, uh, or try to remember. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we talk about regulars. Let's come to with regulars then. Okay, most astrologers like regulars because it's the king. The the lucky yeah. the lucky of regulars is a little king, but I think there is some resource point out in the Babylonian, so-called uh, um, Akkadian time. So that would be like a 2300 BC, around, the around that time. They say the lion, in the lion constellation, well, there's a kind of a direct translation, mm -hmm. there is a king star located at the lion's breast. So 
that means regular. Uh -huh. So we know this star has been mentioned as a related to fate of the kings since 2300 BCE, long time, long time ago. So we usually treat this star with a respect because okay. it's the fate of the king. So, well, yes, I think it's quite important. And um, if you really- Do you have any Asian, examples? Do, do you have any examples from our current uh, current yeah, um yeah but you don't like it you don't most people don't like to hear his name <laughs> okay well i i like to know like you know who who has who has uh uh regulars in a in a in a way that we can see it donald trump <laughs> of course yeah but but yeah but we can still see it he was you know a king yeah. of his country for a while yeah. he did yeah. did yeah. he was there right he so did not like a king he did not like a crazy king okay so very well, interesting very interesting let me give you a few line of la vivian robson i like it i i don't really follow him because he sometimes his word is very funny he's a, he always put good and bad together but but okay. it's like very funny so he say it gave the violence destructive military owner a sh owner military owner of a short duration so short time owner he's like uh, this is your, your one minute celebrity you know and then but it's also uh violent death imprisonment so it's quite interesting vivian robertson talking about that mm -hmm. okay so this but most of astrology give the meaning about the courageous and the noble mind this is well he's bold i mean donald <laughs> trump is bold yeah, and you, yeah. you have to tell it yeah. he, he goes without even thinking he he's true. going i mean true I, on, like Leo another, I like another another thing when the um dr bernadie brady she in her mm -hmm. book she mentioned about the regular she said all these four so-called royal stars are usually related to success or fans but mm -hmm. each of them have to overcome a challenge the regular challenge is revenge so uh -huh. if they if they want to be success but they want to do the revenge they will fall out of grace so it's quite a very interesting to use yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah 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 nothing is yeah it, there's always a part of free will it's something you know like a free will coexists with with fate i believe i, agree. Like, I, mean, I agree no. yeah i agree should we move to another star? Oh, let me let, let me add in one thing because regulars, if people, uh, if us, if you want to know, most people know that it's at this moment, this year is at zero degree Virgo. It's not in the tropical Leo now. It's in tropical Virgo. Oh, okay. zero degree. Yeah, because it starts, they move a little bit, right? Yeah. They, yeah. It's very slowly, like every hundred, two hundred years, you can see like one a degree, two, couple of degrees. Degree, one degree every 71 or 72 years okay okay so that's yeah. so it's a very it's very slowly yeah. movement yeah yes. okay and then yes. do you also look at aspects to to other uh, planets no, not, not just conjunctions to. I only not look to, okay. Conjunction. okay too much I only look okay yeah i think okay too much. Be too much yes <laughs> yeah, 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 too much. yeah yeah i know you, you, you we kind of lost lost in all this stuff we lose the, the essence of a chart when you go when we go too far um <laughs> maybe yeah <laughs> but an, no, I, I like the flavors, you know, as you said, you know, if you if you have this note that this is uh, in your chart's client, uh, in your uh, client's chart, and then you see some other stuff going on mm -hmm. in the chart and, you know, from their talk to them, it can give another layer of understanding it. So I, I like yes. that. I think yes. that's why yes. we use asteroids, we use many other midpoints, yes. there's so many other things we can use yes. to help us go deeper in the chart. That's, I, I totally agree. Right. Cool. Okay, so th those are the four royal ones. We, I know about Vega. Oh, you know. I know about Vega. 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 Let's talk about Vega. Yeah. Later. Let's finish the four royals one, and then okay. let's talk about Vega. Okay. 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 So, okay. so the Alden Baron, Alden Baron is the spring one. This is uh, the maker of the mm -hmm. spring, spring equinox in the North Hemisphere. Today is degrees ten Gemini, ten Gemini. It's okay. So, uh, the Ptolemy say this this star has the Mars type energy. So you can really apply all the Mars archetype mm -hmm. really if you brave enough apply this uh mars archetype to alton baron if you have any planet located at 10 degree gemini that would be the, the uh, uh oh, sorry to interrupt you what is the orb you use for fixed stars one degree one, degree. one only yeah. yeah one degree yeah. Okay. One degree. Go, go on sorry yeah. yeah so this would be most important it's successful but also you know it's springtime so it's very productive 
and uh, also is like abundancy. I like this idea, and uh, it's like. Uh, but more important, each one have a challenge. Like Bradley Bradley say, uh, Alton Bunner's challenge is in crit uh, integrity. So honest, they have to be honest when you do yeah. the because it's Taurus. When you running the you know business. You have to be honest. If not, people will never go to have business with you. That this is the challenge of our environment. They are strong. They are they are very powerful, and they they have they like oh, they are they are very easy to get success and uh, and uh, and uh, but the, and the popularity. But they have to be honest. This is the thing. Our environment. So what I hear. So what I hear. If you are not, if you don't have integrity, and if you don't do it right, it mm -hmm. will not help you. It will not, and it will have some、okay. consequence. So, an example, an example. Who has this uh, uh, star? I think、um, Meryl Streep, the famous actress,、mm -hmm. Meryl Streep. She has the、uh, Mars at eight degree Gemini, so it's kind of a lie. And another one is a kind of a queenish type,、uh, two, both of them. One is the、uh, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis. Well, you know the the the. the yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep.、Uh -huh. Another one, I think the Oprah Winfrey, but it's another method. She has、mm -hmm. the moon parent with Alden Baron, so I mean, they are very productive. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you have to use it well to actually have results. I like that. You know, otherwise、yeah. it will backfire. I like that. That's good.、Yeah. It's not just. Yeah, it's not like oh, it's it is what it is. This is me. No, no, it's not. I, I like、agree. that. I agree.、Okay. Like like there is some always. You you can easily find some big famous big star, but appear in some murders chart or some. It, it's it's like it's going to happen. Exactly.、Yes. Should we go to Antares? This is Scorpio's yes, card. Yes, please. So, oh, that's a today's degree. Today, the、uh, Antares degree is at ten degrees Sagittarius. Ten ten degrees oh, Sagittarius. Oh, okay. It's not in Scorpio anymore. It's moved to Sagittarius now. Let me give you some.、Uh, this why I love the big stars because. Different culture see the star and the constellation differently. So, with in the in the European mythology, this is a gigantic Scorpio going to attack Orion. And okay, then yeah, well, interesting in the Chinese culture, Chinese ancient astronomy, this is a flying dragon, and、uh, this is a, a, a Chinese type of dragon is a kind of old. Auspicious type and bring the rain and bring the production, bring the agricultural things. But also, this star in there in the Chinese culture is a king star too. It's a star of represent the king's face too. But、okay. have you have you watch ever watch a Disney animation called Moana, a little South Pacific、yes. girl sailing? Yes, I love that. I love her. I, I love, love her. her, and every time I watch the story, I cry. But、uh, you know, they related to star, right? Because when they sailing, they have to align with the star called called um um Maui's hook, fish hook. It,、mm -hmm. It's a hook pipe. That is Scorpio. That is、wow. Scorpio. So the top, the top, the top of that、oh. is the, the the hook of Scorpio. But for for the for the Maori for the Maori, Antares is super important. He is the father of all the gods, and he is also、uh -huh. the healing god, healing god. So Antares for them is a healing god. So it's very beautiful. So you can apply different culture in the story. But yes, for yes, Western astrology, the astrology we use today, it is a successful, but with a passionate, it's a very crazy,、mm -hmm. passionate power, and they will. Trying to get everything they want,、uh, but there is a challenge. We know they can get the things they want, but、uh, they have to aware about their obsession. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, you have to know all these stories and mythology and stories from all the cultures to understand astrology as well. People、exactly. disregard, and that's very, very important. Yeah, mythology. I, yeah, yeah, from all the. From all the, all the, you know, from everybody. Like, there are some new planets,、um, planetoids, like a、uh, Maku 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 from the、oh, Hawaiian tradition.、Yes. You know, from the, so yeah, there's like a new thing coming up, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah so, I like that. So that's why I love astrology.、Yeah. All the mythology is so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. No, no, yeah. Cool. Go ahead. Sorry, there's one more, right? Yeah, there's one, one more star.、Oh, yeah, one more. The big star is called for Moho. The from Arabic、mm -hmm. the name is mean mouse of a fish. 
this fish is under the feet of Aquarius. So drinking the, you know, the, the holy water or inst the, the water of wisdom from the Aquarius. So yes. very interesting. These stars are very different from the other three. So mm -hmm. the, the, the quality of this star, if you have any planet at a four degree Pisces, around the four degree mm -hmm. Pisces, you probably have this quality is a little bit independent, a little bit isolated, a little bit disconnected from other people or mm -hmm. stand out from the environment, from rest of mm -hmm. other. And it's a very unique star because in the four other star, they are all around the eclectic field. But this one is not. This one is a little bit south. And another thing, if you look really look at this, the nice guy, um, if you are in the kind of a, around 30 degree or 20 degree um, uh, latitude, like uh, you see mm -hmm. in the in the in the winter time, you will see around the horizon these bright stars stand there alone. It's lonely there around it. There's nothing there. There's no other star. But it's beautiful there. So for Moho, um, for Moho's story is about the wisdom, about the wisdom, mm -hmm. wisdom about the ideal, about the idealization. Tell me, give it that Mercury Venus quality, so you can see it's like a beautiful mind. Mm -hmm. um, but the Benedict Bradley says, well, it's a fantasy, it's ideal. So there is a challenge. It's like a don't don't trap in you don't trap in your fantasy for too long. So disconnect from the real world, that will be a problem. Ah, um, yeah, so this I is, love it. I love yeah. all, all of this. I get, yeah. My head is blown away. Mind, it's mind blowing. I think it's, it, no, it's very, very interesting. Yeah. You, your knowledge is impeccable. You have so much knowledge to, to share and give. And I, I thank you so much. It's amazing. Like, oh, it's really, really good. Like, my, my mind is mind blown. That, that's amazing. Like, I have so many things now research and, and look into. Amazing. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Would you mention anything else besides these uh, four? You talk about the Vega. Let me talk about Vega. Okay. Yes. Vega must be talked about because it's summer now. And when you go in outside, you can see that Vega will be high up mm -hmm. in the sky. The, the, the summer triangle is uh, Vega, Ultra, and the Deneb. So these three stars, also we know Vega is like a, a harper or a lyra in the, in the ancient Greek mythology. The, the lyra of the Ophios. So it's very poetic, mm -hmm. it's artistic, poetic with a singing. And you remember the mythology of Orpheus, his wife died, and so he tried to go to the hell, yes. sing the song, touch he, the heart. He was very eyes. sad. Yeah. He was he very song, sad and depressed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Convinced yeah. the Hades and Persephone allowed him to bring his wife back. So Orpheus, so the Lyra has magical power of convince other people. Also, oh, that's what, so if, if you have Vega somewhere else, you can convince others. You can, they are very, yes. oh, I like that. Yeah. See, that's, that's beautiful. That, that's very today's beautiful. Degree, today's degree is 15 degree Capricorn 38. 15 degree Capricorn 38. <laughs> yes. So, what I say is there's a lot of, there's a lot. I mean, Benedict Brady least maybe like uh, 64 fixed star in her book. I like, I keep mentioning her because. Uh, the, this is the more recent work. I mean, the uh, Vivian Robson, he's a last century's author. I like his work, but a little bit, you know, uh, old fashioned and uh, mm -hmm. the few things are not really uh, come, come uh, co with, with today's mind. But uh, I like uh, uh, Benedict Brady, uh, especially this one. Okay, Planet, cool. uh, Planet and the later when I. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna save the video and then please later in the comment can you just put the sure, the, sure. the name of the Definitely. book so people can know and they yeah. can reference and they listen where where can they find more yeah. information more knowledge because this is yeah. mind blowing for me it's like it's 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 magic yeah. and history and and astrology and 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 everything together uh, combined yeah. in one it's beautiful yes. beautiful yes. yeah you do have to believe in magic a little bit when you when you do astrology I think. It is very funny. I, I usually believe I I'm most uh, kind of a rational mind and I don't, I doubt of magic. But you convince me, yes, when you are working with big stars, you have to believe in magic. And I think a lot of ancient magic, they are practiced during the particular time when the star, when the particular star is in a certain position. Like for Moho, we talk yes. about the, the uh -huh. ancient Greek will worship 
Formoho in a certain day tour to Dimitra, the the um, I think the the, the asteroid we call series. series. The, the series, the, yes. The, yeah, goddess of agriculture. They will worship Formoho associate with mm -hmm. the agricultural production. So this is the magic practice too. So you have to, yes. if you know that the, the stars are related to certain energy and you use the timing because stars are the calendar in the ancient time or the, the hour maker. They can, when they see the certain star rising, they know, they know what time it is and what day it is. Okay. So we have a full moon today in Capricorn. Mm. Is any of the fixed stars connected to, to, to today's full moon or uh, no? Not really, not at this not moment. Really. It's okay. quite very interesting. Yes, I did check. I did check. There's no, there's no, not famous, famous uh, fixed star around uh, this area at this moment. Okay. Uh, yeah, so. so, so but, but, but it, 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 it can happen. Like for during the eclipses, if you have sometimes it can happen. And what is the effect if we have a fixed ooh, star involved ooh. in one of the major yeah. things happening, lunations or like, eclipses or something? Like this year, like this year, the yes. solar eclipse at 29 degree Aries, 29 degree mm -hmm. Aries. Well, there is a something there, but usually astrologer hardly talk about it. But you know, I'm a very weird person. I like to, I like to study the the things undiscovered or 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 people ignore it. This is that's not very... weird. That's beautiful. <laughs> that's that's your touch. That's exactly why I have you here to give us a different perspective. No, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Have you, do you know a galaxy called Andromeda galaxy, a beautiful yes. spiral star cloud, a very beautiful image. I think a lot of people love this, but you can see it with your eye. When you see it in the sky in the September, it's a little orange cloud in the sky, little orange mm -hmm. cloud in the sky. This location at 28 degree Aries today. So that means this year, mm -hmm. our solar eclipse is right next to a line with Andromeda galaxy, Andromeda galaxy. And we have to think about the few things. The few things is the one thing would be related to the, the uh, female in chain. So that could be mean something like uh, the people has been forced to do something they don't want or the controlling about the female ability. Wow. Or it could oh. be, it could be, but when you see, when you say the galaxy itself, this is the close, is our neighbor, is the neighbor of a Milky Way galaxy. So I uh -huh. usually represent, usually represent a future perspective. I did in my study, I find a lot of people, if they have the planet connect with the Andromeda galaxy, they are usually very idealism, very idealism. They have a lot uh -huh. of idea and they, they have a lot of opinion about the future and they were not afraid to, to carry it out. I love that. Yeah. See? Yes. See, there's so many things like, you know, I love this. I love it. This is, yeah, yeah, look, and this is very interesting. So it's, it's like Uranus, like it was like a flavor of Uranus. I, I mm -hmm. do agree. I do agree. There's, there's mm -hmm. a Uranus flavor there because it's about tomorrow. It's about the future. It's about how mm -hmm. you work it out. But the, the things we a big stuff, um, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I want to believe it. That is mean because the big stars are not on the ecliptic belt. So they are the king, they are the son of their own galaxy. They are the son of their own system. So, so they are, they are usually, they are usually when the connection with the fixed stars or anything uh, around the celestial body, like the, the, the nebula or, or cluster, this type of things. First, I would say, usually it brings things to large scale, large scale, mm -hmm. like in your personal chart, that could be your personal affair that could be your personal business but if they connect to fix up it bring up the label first uh -huh. the scale will be larger could be family could be whole company could be whole country or society mm -hmm. are involved with like these things that's first things and the second could be maybe not just human society it could be universal it could be you know for this for, for this earth you know or I'm, I'm just like thinking you know how so many people are hooked up on Star Trek, yeah. Star Wars, and they are they know all these worlds yeah. from the stories, but, but we have literally stars with their own worlds that uh -huh. actually we can we can learn and know, not just 
the the you know the the, the imaginary ones we have the real ones we have stories with them yeah. like you just all all that you are saying it, it just sounds to me like a like a real star trek you know what i'm saying like <laughs> like it, it's amazing right yeah, i love it i agree that is what how i feel for the first time i think it was 2004 maybe around that time the first time i went to the um a school and then bernard brady was there talking about big stars so i have no idea like you i have no idea what these big stars i just sitting there and wondering why i'm there then the journey begins, I just feel, oh my God, like you say, I'm in Star Trek. She's talking about three dimension view. What are they? What are they? <laughs> and I'm just like, I lost in the space. And what are they talking about? But it's so amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. And I, yeah. I touched a little bit, uh, so many things to explore, but I was, um, I touched a little bit of gal Galactic Center mm. and, and what do we have there? It's like a whole new story for a different life, but it's also yeah. interesting and fascinating, yeah. right? Yeah, but yeah. I think stars are more relatable. Mm -hmm. They're more here and present, and they can have more effect in our personal lives and lives of of um, Earth in general, right? From mon mon from the mundane perspective, which you mm -hmm. also uh, like to practice. And that's going to be a theme also for another life because I want to talk about mundane astrology. I think it's very interesting, especially yeah. in these days you have this all these changes coming up mm, yeah. uh, right especially 20, 25 2026 20, with all this oh, energy yes. from female yeah. female to masculine i mean from from earth and water is going to go to air and fire yes huge changes ahead of us i don't yeah. think people are even aware of of like i like i we that, that know something about what's coming coming i think we're going to be mind blown and people who think and i don't know it's going to be it's going to yeah. be huge change it's going to be something uh, wow Right. I agree. I agree. Thanks to astrology, because we can foresee this planet increase, they change in the sign. If not, I think if we face like a pandemic or or the, the change of this year, like AI suddenly jumped out or something, you probably like a insane. That's like, oh, it's so crazy. But with astrology, we say, I can see why. I can see it. Yeah, I can, I can see all the all these things being mainstream. It's not about yes, something existing mean, for the elite. It's going to be for every uh, available for everybody. Mm. You know, I'm thinking. You know how um, all this 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 weekend in Omega, I was inspired by all these speakers, and uh -huh. Rick Lavin was talking about, uh, and all of them actually talked about. You know how what is this Pluto and Aquarius energy as well? You know, like uh, the Gutenberg. Uh, when he did the, the when he did a machine for for yeah. printing books, right? Yeah. Something wow, it didn't become mainstream right away, yeah. and then it became, and then you know the discovery of Uranus, you know, it was like wow, we have. So this is gonna be like that. It's gonna be something. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for it, and I, I think fixed stars can also help us with that because um, I think they're gonna have also major role in, in these changes. I think, I think we're gonna so. discover many many different things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for. But like you mentioned about mountain astrology, yes, that is a lot of astrologers, especially working in the mountain astrology, we work with the fixed star because there's a lot of a large scale meaning. Yes. But I mean, in our personal life, if we, if we want to say large scale meaning, that maybe not involves the number of a person, but also maybe dimensional layer of our awake, uh, uh, awareness, maybe like a, the, the soul level or spiritual level. Because, you know, we all talk about in the so many different cultures, we always talk about big stars mm -hmm. are our soul, are from the stars. And when we die, our soul will return to the sky, become the stars. So exactly the stars we're talking about are fixed stars. That's why, you know, Ptolemy also mentioned about this in his book. So it's kind of a, there is a belief that our soul are related to those big stars. So if your chart has any relate in whatever way related to big stars, and that you are really enjoy the kind of personal work or spiritual work or uh, uh, awakening of a soul, the soul moment, try to look the moment and uh, their planet alignment with the stars with the big stars, you maybe will find it very interesting. Amazing. No, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a topic we can talk about for, for, for hours I and agree. hours. Yeah. Uh, it's really interesting. Um, so before we wrap up, would you, would you mention anything else that you personally like or practice? Like. Or? Well, um, yes. Um, 
You mean the six stars or or or? Yes. Or, okay. You, well, yeah. let's let's talk about one thing. The one thing we couldn't ignore it. The brightest、okay. stars, the brightest star in our sky is a series. So yes, when we talk about it, is at、uh, the fourteen degree Cancer twenty four. So it's the、mm-hmm. most bright star in the whole sky, apart from the sun. Let's ignore the sun. The the bright the series is the the most bright.、Uh, so we can see is either in the winter. Winter is the best time to see it. But at that, around this time, around the summer, I mean early summer or late springtime, it will disappear. It will disappear, and、uh, especially for the North Hemisphere because the sunlight block it. But when it reappear around August. For the low latitude area, would be early August. For the higher latitude, like UK or Canada, that would be like late August. They will reappear in the sky before the sunrise. Okay. That's why they call it become helical rising, rising before the sun. You know, have you ever heard about in the spiritual prophets people talking about the the opening of a lion gate, lion gate、yes. protocol? Well. I、yes. believe I believe some some people do the study and believe that the the opening of the Lion Gate Protocol are kind of a, a borrowed idea from ancient Egyptians、uh, a festival. They slipped the series become a lion rising because that's the、uh, that's the、uh, goddess of Nile series. Wow, it's related to Nile, and that's kind of kind of a New Year festival for them. New Year festival for them. So okay, okay, so okay, celebration and about the awakening of the soul, you know. So this is a very important fixed stars, and then one thing, just one line. They are they are related to. Uh, Mars and Jupiter type energy, so it's very daring.、Uh-huh. And we know Harry Potter. There is a character called Sirius, Harry Potter's godfather. We believe, of course, every astrologer know J.K. Rowling know astrology. Of, Doesn't matter if you like or not, she know astrology. And definitely, she、yeah. when she give anyone the fixed star name, she check it like a Sirius. Like、yeah, she, she knew what she was doing. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, she she knew what she was doing. I like that. I like that so, very much. You, so you, you said Sirius is. Yeah, yeah. Is in Cancer, fourteen degrees 14 Cancer. Degree Cancer. Yes. So the character of the series in the book are exactly like the series we are going to talk about. Brave, protective, and、uh, they are crazy.、Mm-hmm. They are they have a passion about a certain important mission, and they are willing or willing or not. But they may have to sacrifice something important in order to get what they want. That is a very important stage. So, so like I'm thinking,、uh, I, I have it. I have it very near. I near my my Venus. My Venus is sixteen degrees Venus、okay. uh, Cancer. So it's very it's very near. It's not it's not、yeah. one one degree, but it's very nearby. Yeah. And I'm thinking, yes, I I feel that I can you know be overprotective sometimes, you know. <laughs> That's true. No, but、yes. I look at my kid. You know how I raise my kid and stuff. Yeah, I can be. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. It makes sense. Cool.、Yeah. I like that. So many knowledge, uh, Rod. Uh, this was amazing. Uh, I this I, I just wanted、uh, to introduce fixed stars so people get curious、yeah. and interested、yeah. to learn because it's 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 so much、uh, knowledge. But I think you're so knowledgeable. You're. I, please, guys, you have to. Go follow and 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 everything. And I I, I do follow you on YouTube, and you have great guests,、yeah. and you talk about many many different interesting things.、Yeah. Um, so I want to thank you for your knowledge and time and experience and sharing that with us. I'm gonna save the video for、uh, viewers later to see.、Uh, you know, people de- live in different zones, and I I you know, it's very hard to 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 adjust everything to, to for everybody to be like.、Um, thank you. For where do you live?、Chance. No problem.、Oh, where do you live? I live in London. Oh, in London.、Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, well,、yeah. thank you for the questions. And、uh, I mean, fix that is amazing. So I can talk for a whole day. So I have just learned to stop. <laughs> no. Yeah. I know. And especially with Gemini moons, I know that you know. Oh, I, you know that. Yeah. When I when I have a Gemini moon as a guest, I'm like, okay, this is gonna be. Da, da, da. <laughs> It's always very interesting. Very interesting. So I like、yeah. that brainstorming and idea sharing. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, who, thank who joined. And、um, we can talk、uh, more about Monday in astrology.、Definitely. I want to talk more about that. Okay. Thank you.、Cool. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 See you soon. See you.